Right, one thing about George Galloway is the man is no stranger to controversy. In 1994, after the first Gulf War, Galloway had this to say to Saddam Hussein. Sir, I salute your courage, your strength, your indefatigability. Galloway said he was referring to the Iraqi people, not Saddam. Then in 2003, Galloway tore into George W. Bush and Tony Blair, saying they attacked Iraq like wolves. That got him kicked out of Blair's Labor Party. More recently, Galloway got into it with our federal government. Back in 2009, he was supposed to come to Canada to speak about the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. But Ottawa accused him of supporting terrorism, saying he provided financial support to Hamas. Here's the money! Galloway says he never gave money directly to Hamas. He said he donated aid for the Palestinian people in Gaza. Either way, Ottawa considers Hamas a terrorist group, so it banned Galloway from entering Canada. The fight ended up in court, and a Canadian judge said the decision was politically motivated, so Galloway was allowed in this past October. But he didn't come quietly. He said he's going to sue the government for branding him a terrorist. In fact, he says that allegation may have been a reason he lost his seat in the British Parliament after nearly 25 years. Oh, and Galloway's Cross Canada speaking tour? Well, that's back on, too. It's called Free Palestine, Free Afghanistan, Free Speech. George Galloway. Nice to see you. How are you? Nice to see you. Welcome back to the program. You're Thanks. In Good the, to be here in person. In the flesh? Yes. Did you ever think you'd make your way back to this country? I did. I was confident because I knew that Canada ultimately was a, a country governed by laws rather than by the whim of here today, gone tomorrow politicians. Now, now let's just, are you going to sue this government? You had talked about it. Yes. Uh, on at least two fronts. Yep. Uh, one abusive process of which I and the people who organized my tour were victims. And a second, which the judge has already found on, that the Canadian government abused my right to privacy under Canadian law by leaking to Rupert Murdoch's Sun newspaper the decision that they had made before they told me. Now, as a taxpayer, you know when you sue this government, you're suing all of us. Yes, I know. They've cost uh, the Canadian taxpayer a pretty penny with this affair. It took uh, six months of judicial process, a 60-page judgment by the High Court judge, and all of that costs uh, money. However, anything I do win... I'm going to spend here in Canada on building an anti-war movement even bigger than the one that already exists. So at least it won't be leaving the country. Well, what do you make of the last little while, uh, you know, your experiences here? Like, what do you make it of It was Kafka-esque to deliver ambulances and wheelchairs and medicine and to pay the nurses and the doctors in the Gaza hospitals and to have that thrown at you as terrorism bankrupts the word of all meaning in the language. If you're going to describe that as terrorism, then what are you going to, what, what are you going to use to describe real terrorism? But what do you do in a situation where uh, a democratically elected government, and it wasn't this government that declared Hamas a terrorist organization, mm -hmm. it's been previous governments as well from different parties. So when, when a democratically elected, two democratically elected governments have declared Hamas a terrorist organization, now they're not declared that in, in Britain, but they are in Canada. How do you like, the country has laws and rules, and, and this is what this country said. So you can see why they would say that, that you were giving money to an organization that has been declared to be yes, a terrorist. Yes, but I didn't give money to a terrorist organization, even if but you I accepted... Hamas, right? No, I gave money to the Ministry of Health. And the Ministry of Health happens to be governed by Hamas because they won the election. So that's what everybody does. If Oxfam goes to Gaza, mm -hmm. they have to deal through the Minister of Health. And the Minister of Health is in Hamas. So you can't pick and choose other people's leaders. I'm not a supporter of Hamas. I was disappointed when they won the election. And if I had a vote, it wouldn't be for them. But I can't choose the Palestinian leadership any more than I can choose the Canadian leadership. If I could, I'd change both of them. But there you go. <laughs> what, um, what would you do uh, now that you're out of politics? I mean, how do you feel about that? Well, I'm not out of well, politics. You're, you're, you're not, you're not uh, I'm uh, not in the House of Commons after nearly a quarter of a century, but that just means I'm going around other people's countries as well as my own, speaking my mind. I've got two TV shows, two radio shows, a newspaper column. So I'm in as much political uh, um, activity as ever before, and I can reveal I'm going to run again for the Scottish Parliament in just a few months' time back to your in roots. May, back to my roots in, uh, in Glasgow. Your TV show, you just you interviewed uh, Ahmadinejad. I did. Yeah, well, I mean, the, uh, that's another complicated relationship. I think a lot of people uh, look at Ahmadinejad mm. like he's um, in no way, shape, or form a democratic leader. 
Well, he was democratically elected, unlike all the other leaders in that region who are kings yeah. and never get elected at all and are absolute uh, potentates. But he's not my kind of guy. But then I, I, I'm not Iranian. He's not my leader. He but you was. You support for him, didn't you, on the no, show? No, no. Like, I think on the contrary, on yeah. on my show, I have live on Iranian TV at least five times criticized and even condemned. I condemn, for example, their uh, revisionism over the Holocaust. Yeah. I did that live on on television. I criticized the way they handled the post-election situation uh, in Tehran, and I'm a allowed to do that because they know that if they tried to stop me saying what I wanted to say, I would walk. I wouldn't allow anybody to tell me what to say on television. But like, I'm just curious what your definition of a just politician is. Because uh, Ahmadinejad is the guy who declares there's no homosexuals in Iran. He is, mm. he is clear. He, he has talked about, and when, when you talk about um, condemning their view on the Holocaust. Pressure on another seat and another one up in the Midlands where we hope to win. Uh, but I'm missing it and so I'm going to try again in May to be elected this time for the Scottish Parliament. In the interim, Labour has chosen a new leader, a leader who agrees with me about the war in Iraq, who opposed it, would have voted against it if he'd been in Parliament at the time. But he was probably in short trousers, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, he uh, is saying the same things about Iraq as I did. So the possibility exists, of course that I'll end up uh, back in the Labour Party, which I joined back when I was 13. Is that going to feel, well, we'll find out if that feels weird to him. Also, I want to find out uh, um, uh, what, what uh, Mr. Galloway respects about George Bush and Tony Blair. More with George Galloway when we come back. All right, you're back here with George Galloway on the program. Um, you like a good fight, right? I was a boxer. Yeah. Uh, Were you a my, good boxer? I, I was not bad. My uh, grand, maternal grandfather was a pretty legendary boxing f uh, trainer. Is that where you learned to be so scrappy? Uh, well, I always take the view that uh, if someone hits me, uh, it's my right, my duty to hit them back. Mm -hmm. But I never, Which I is never. Not a very left-wing policy. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, turning the other cheek's never been my idea of fun. <laughs> Eventually, you just run out of cheeks, don't you? The, uh, the, when you were, um, many people on the left uh, don't get into politics per se. They work in a different, either either yeah. underground or in grassroots or whatever. Um, were you frustrated? Um, because at a certain point, you must have looked around and realized that you were um, not a lone voice, but almost a lone voice, mm. even in your own government. Well, I was a lone voice inside the parliament, or almost a lone voice in the parliament. But outside, there were millions massing, and this disconnect between the street and the parliament, I described it as the boys in the bubble. The politicians were in a bubble. Uh, they got carried away in a kind of mass hysteria about Iraq. They believed the propaganda, their own propaganda. It was entirely circular. Were we ever process. frustrated by the limitations of politics? Well, I never was one who believed that politics was only about parliament. I was always a person trying to build mass movements, trying to give leadership to mass movements. So I always operated on two levels. And uh, by the time the war came, our mass movement was millions strong in England and, of course, echoed across the world in millions. If you didn't do this, if politics wasn't your calling, what would you be doing? Well, they say that politics is show business for ugly people. <laughs> <laughs> what would I know about that? <laughs> what's the one thing you respect about George Bush? And don't say he's a good father because that's a cop-out. So what's the one thing you respect about George W. Bush? To be honest with you, I'd be struggling even as a Christian to find a kind word to say about him. I think he was an imbecile. I think that Tony Blair didn't have the alibi he had of being stupid. So I blame Blair more than I do so Bush. What's the good thing I mean, about Tony Blair? You must know him better. I know him very well, uh, and, uh, you know, whilst most people thought George Bush couldn't read a book, never mind write one, no one's surprised that Tony Blair can write a book and uh, that it's a big seller mm -hmm. because he's always had a, a way with words. He was an election winner. It's good to be an election winner. He was a modernizing force in uh, British Labour politics, and it needed modernizing. Mm -hmm. But it's one thing modernizing the cover of the Bible, but when you start rewriting the Bible therein, that's sacrilege. And what's, that's, I think, what he did. What's the most important thing you learned from your folks? Uh, not to drink alcohol, uh, <laughs> which I've never tasted in my life, which means I'm up in the morning with a spring uh -huh. that not many politicians of my vintage can, uh, can say. And to always stand with the underdog, 
I always have, even in a football match or a hockey match, I'm with the team that's getting humped by Every 30 time. points. Yeah, always. So you're not, so you're not much of a gambler Saint then either, Jude, are you? Saint Jude is my saint, the saint of hopeless causes. <laughs> Good to see you, man. George Galloway, everybody, nice Thanks, to see you. Thanks for coming. All right, strongbow.com is the website. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.